Hello, welcome to Quail's Knitting Nest. My name is Joy. Hi, I'm Janet. Good to be back. Yes. It's gorgeous today. Mm, beautiful weather today. Is it early? Um, early. Low 60s, sunny. Not like this weekend. Not like this weekend. <laughs> Today's October 24th. So this past weekend was Rhinebeck, the 21st and 22nd of October. And Joy and I attended. Mm -hmm. Joy attended Saturday and I was there both days. I took My the husband. bus up with uh, the local yarn shop, and yeah, you you went My with your husband for the whole Friday weekend, and left on Monday. And the entire time we were there, it was showering and chilly. Sunday was really chilly, and Wednesday well, was Saturday. The cold least. front came through. Yeah, Saturday and Friday were kind of humid mm -hmm. and rainy, but but we made it. Everybody made it. I don't think it discouraged anybody. It was crowded. Yeah, it was crowded. Even Sunday was crowded. I, I think that maybe some of the people who didn't show up on Saturday oh. showed up on Sunday they because it was one of the busiest Sundays I think I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. So we had a good time. We did. We did. In spite of the weather. <laughs> we saw a lot of people. Yeah. I saw a lot of podcasters yeah. on the hill. And yeah. So how did we start? Oh, we started in the buildings. Mm -hmm. That's right. The ABC buildings. That's right. The large barns. With, I like uh, them the best. The, well, they have the bigger, more popular vendors in there. <clears throat> oh, that's right. We started at Feeder Brook. Yes. That's right. Because a little bit later, I'll talk about the sweater I want to make and show you the yarn. But we wanted to get to Feeder Brook first, and it was crowded. And it was right there in Bar Building A was the first. Mm -hmm. Those wonderful paintings with the sheep. Um, sheep in The, funny, sheep. <laughs> the yeah. funny pictures and sayings about the sheep. Yeah. I love that place. That was They were there again. Wow. So we had our heroes, gyros, heroes, whatever. Oh, for lunch. For lunch. Mm -hmm. You I had the falafel. You had one, falafel, and, you and had I had lamb. lamb. Delicious. Joy, Joy always eats lamb at the festivals. <laughs> I have a thing about that. <laughs> I can't really see the sheep. <laughs> you can't see the sheep in the barn and then go eat the lamb for lunch. That Maryland too. She can walk. <laughs> oh, oh wait, we're talking about the Dutch. We should say the Dutchess County Fairgrounds in Rhinebeck, New York, mm -hmm. the annual Sheep and Wool Festival. New York State we're kind Sheep of and Wool Festival. Going on and on about this, but like everybody knows, and they probably do. But how many of you went to it? Yeah. This weekend, quite a few of our friends were there. Although mm -hmm. I didn't bump into them. Beth was the only one we mm -hmm. saw. Well, I saw Natalie. I didn't see her. And I didn't see Karen either. No. Nope. I said something to Karen about not seeing her. And she said, well, I was probably waiting in a line. Um, <sighs> yes. Yes. The food lines are as long as always. Brock, the fr deep fried broccoli seemed to be a big one this year. Oh, yeah? The lines were very long, especially on Sunday. I noticed that. Um, the hill was crowded all day long. I got over there. I guess it was about 1.30 on Saturday, it was the podcasters gathered at one o'clock. Mm. And I, so I did see some, quite a, actually quite a few. What else? Oh, and then of course, two o'clock was the Andrea Maori meet up on the hill for the tessellated sweaters, which we'll talk about, I'll talk a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And there were hundreds. <laughs> That's all I can say. Oh yeah, there, there were, were hundreds. A it, lot. Andrea started out by, she's the designer of the tessellated sweaters the vest and the pullover. Started out by telling everybody she would take an individual picture with everybody. So to line up the line, it took 50 minutes. The big group picture of all of us standing on the hill with her in our sweaters was supposed to be at 2.45 and I think it ended up being three o'clock or something. And Beth, our friend Beth, joined us on the hill with her vest and I had my sweater on. Beth was easy to spot because not only is she tall, mm -hmm. but her vest was like hot pink. And you could see her in the picture. Yeah. You could only see part of my head in the picture. We tried to stand in the back row because, well, actually, there was a huge mud pit in the middle. Yeah, the hill was a bit muddy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there wasn't much <laughs> grass left after that. Oh, we saw our Knit mother ink. and daughter. Knit ink. Knit ink. I can never remember that. I should know ink because she does the, the lettering, which yeah. is so pretty. Yeah. Like calligraphy. Petra and Nata 
Natasha. Natasha. So we met them. They look very nice. Oh, that's right. And they gave us, they gave us a little bit of swag. Swag. What did they give us? Oh, a pen. This is cute. Let's oh. Take it out. <laughs> Looks like the two of them, I guess. And a little. Oh, this is a cute little stitch marker with the that's same good. impression of the two of them on it. I wonder who that. drew that for them. A little candy. I don't know. It's so fun. And a little bag. Who else? And you saw the Let's man see. from Lagos Garçon? Oh, Lagos Garçon. Oh, yeah, Vincent. I don't know where Max was, but Vincent was at the Garfanon yarn booth. He was working, he was helping there. Because he and Max sold their yarn, Lagos Garçon, um, the day before at Woolen Folk. The Knitting Posse. I saw them on Sunday too, the mm -hmm. three of them together mm -hmm. on Saturday. They're friends with Max and Vincent from Le Garçon. Oh, we saw this, this and woman. that, yeah, a designer. Her name is Jen Lampin, and she had on this stunning brioche sweater. I'll put a picture of, of it up here. She was wearing it, mm -hmm. and we met her, Jen Lampin. She's and she synaptic had a beautiful shawl in the sweater. Oh yeah, do you remember the name of the shawl? It was no. like an upside down tree. It was beautiful. No, I don't. And you saw Beth from the farm? We oh, from oh, Painted Pat Spring. Farm. Yeah, Painted Spring Painted Farm. Spring. Yep, I went and visited her booth and got another skein of yarn and visited with her briefly. Mm -hmm. Yep. She said they were having a good day. I stopped at Miss Babs, of course. It was busy on Saturday and they were almost sold out but i saw the color and i had to get it this year's color is hillside blue pine that's the rhinebeck 2023 color i learned the trick last year that if you come early on sunday morning they restock everything and that's what we did i was there at 10 after 9 sunday morning and i got this is the color this one is 100 percent merino full fingering Beautiful. It's her yummy two ply, she calls it. I just love these mm -hmm. colors. And then I bought the cashmere wool and nylon blend. The name of this um, base is Caroline and it's fingering. And Miss Babs is from Mountain City, Tennessee. I'm sure many of you have heard of her. It's the same colorway and fingering. I was thinking the cashmere for the socks because that's nylon. And then I thought this would make something nice for the neck. Oh. What I was thinking, it's a, that my leaf cowl, the leaping leaf something oh, or other, yeah. this mm -hmm. might be good for the leaves. Yeah. I don't know the color, but I don't know. I have to see about it. We went into our friend Nancy's booth. She's Tika Bags. You know, there was a bag I wanted to go back and look at and I forgot, but we'll see her again, I'm sure. But her daughter started making note cards. She her did? daughter did the paintings, the right. original paintings. I don't know how they produced the uh... one. These are note cards. Oops, there's a little bit of a glare. There's two different. I think they're beautiful. Let's see if I like that. Maybe. Can you see it? Yeah. So Joy and I both bought these. Yep. And the other cards she had were chickens. There's a little sticker on the bottom to show you. She also it's her website. And she also has chicken. <laughs> it's uh, laurensandmartin.com. Mm -hmm. Well, her daughter helped out a couple times at the knit out with the booth. Oh, did she? So I, I have remember. met her before. On Saturday, too, we met. <laughs> this wasn't in the Katrinkles booth. Because the Katrinkles booth was in one of the barns mm -hmm. we saw. And it was so mobbed, you couldn't even get in there. But this was in one of the little, I forget which. I think it was the Utopia booth. Mm. Yes, I think it was. You're right. So these are washable tags. This is to mark the back of your sweater. So you know which is the back of your sweater. Because sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, when you put on your sweaters, you have to look at where the short rows are, which, which is really the front and the back. You don't know. So I thought this was really clever. It says this is the back. But it also has... The back of a sheep on it. <laughs> I thought they were the cutest yeah. things. Yeah, they are cute. <laughs> so these are things you can only find when you go someplace like yeah. this. You can't, yeah. When you look online, I don't know. It's just not the same. 
Oh, one of my very special oh, purchases yeah. on Sunday because the line on Saturday was ridiculous. Yeah, it was. It's probably a couple hour wait. So Sunday morning, Jim and I went. I said, I saw these bags. Everybody carrying these bags this year. It's the logo, 2023 Sheep and Wool Festival logo, which I think is absolutely gorgeous. I do too. I love it's it. It's my colors. It's just, oh, it's just gorgeous, I think. So Sunday morning, we got there a quarter, it must have been about a quarter to 10. Stood in line for a half an hour, 45 minutes, and we I actually got one. Oh, I should show the inside, of course. It's huge, and it has a big turquoise pocket inside. So what could be better? Turquoise. Mm -hmm. And then, well, they had all kinds of t-shirts and sweatshirts too, but they had little project bags. Cute. Perfect for a sock I think that's, yeah. or a single skein shawl. And these are certified organic cotton, fair wage, fair labor. Clean up the planet one bag at a time. I got a Joy's bag. And this is for you, Joy. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> for your sock, maybe your oh, new sock. Thank bag. you. I got myself one too. So. <laughs> I had to. I had to buy a couple. Everybody was picking up piles of them. Oh, but it's such a neat logo. I really Isn't like that it. Gorgeous. I just love it. And they had it on their, of course, on their the program booklets yeah. or programs. Yeah. Too bad all the pen. If they had the pens, I would have bought one too. But everything was sold out. And then by eleven thirty on Sunday. The tent closed because everything was sold out completely. So I was lucky they brought in more Sunday morning. Yeah, yeah. They restocked, so now I know that. Mm -hmm. I just figured when they sold out Saturday, it was done. Mm -hmm. I was gonna save that for Christmas, but I, I thought I'd give it to you now, <laughs> and you could use it. <laughs> Thank you. Stood in the uh, apple cider donut line and talked to several people. We, I think we stood for at least half an hour waiting for donuts. Mm -hmm. Natalie t said she went Sunday morning, and right at 9 o'clock, she got in the donut line. Oh, did she? Yeah, right away. And we ha I had hot cider, but it wasn't as good as the 4-H one. Where'd you that get the hot the cider before. from? Oh, from at the, the donut at stand. The donut booth. Yeah. Oh. So the 4-H cider was better That's, than the... Oh, yeah. Because last year, I had the hot and the cold. Delicious. That's the best. $2 a cup, the 4-H. Always go there. Yeah. I think that's into me. Oh, I did see Patty Lyons. Oh, you did? Mm-hmm. She, she looked like she was with her family. Any designers? Oh, Don Barker. We saw Don Barker on Saturday on the mm -hmm. hill. Mm -hmm. My float shawl, which I still have in progress. I have it here. And she does the assigned pooling. assigned pooling. And she had a new sweater on this year. It was like a dark color with a lighter color in the yoke. And it, it looked like light pink and dark pink. And the dark pink was like a different texture. Mm-hmm. And the rest of the yarn. I didn't get a real good look at it, but it was different. So this was the Rhinebeck sweater of the year. Andrea Mallory's tessellated pullover was also, there was also the best. I'm really happy with this sweater. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. I love the way it came out. Um, I did modify something though. My sleeves are the solid teal, like my ribbing. Mainly because I was afraid to play yarn chicken with my multicolor. I wasn't sure if I'd have enough for the two sleeves. And another thing is my multicolor, the colors don't repeat. And I, I thought one sleeve would be different color stripes than the other. And that would bother me, I think. <laughs> but the other thing, the other point is by doing it in the solid color, just in stockinette, it was faster, much faster. So, and I finished it the Monday before, so a week ago, yesterday, Monday before, and then I blocked it and washed it on Tuesday and it took three days to dry. Cause it's really a heavy mm -hmm. sweater. It's all mosaic knitting. I used a size three and five needle. Two and four were called for, but I needed three and five to get the gauge of 27 stitches, four inches. Oh, and the other modification, I, which I don't understand, I made my length, this is made from the bottom up in the round to the armholes. She had said to make it 11 inches to the armhole. It was really cropped. Including the ribbing. Including the ribbing. Yeah, that's short. Mine is 16. 
And I think it's still too short. I could, I would have liked another inch or two. Well, Beth must have lengthened hers. She did. Because she's she tall. She told me she did. Now, Beth, our friend, made the vest. I don't know. I guess there was about an equal amount of sweaters and vests. No, actually, there might have been more vests. Because I know people were saying they wanted to get it done fast. I guess. Start it late. And there were a decent amount of sweaters without sleeves, too. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Some people just had it. It rolled over here, and they were wearing it like that, which yeah. I, I had thought of doing if I didn't get the sleeves done. But I really wanted to get my sleeves done. But a lot of people remarked, and they said, that was such a good idea. I think that's what I'm going to do. Do my sleeve in solid that's instead solid. of this. And I said, it is much faster. Now so you have teal. a three-needle bind-off on the three shoulder? Three-needle bind-off on the shoulder, yeah, which I think is a nice feature. Yeah. On the outside for a little decorative touch. And I think that even tied in my sleeve more. Uh-huh, yeah. That's what I like. You know, it was fun to make. It really was fun. I love mosaic knitting. So, and this is I'll beautiful. Do this what a nice fabric you have here. It, when it well, it didn't look like this before it was washed. I showed Jim. I said, "Now yeah. look at this." Even the sleeves were so bumpy and everything. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I wa washed it and dropped it out, laid it flat, I pinned everything too because I wanted to stretch it. I the length. I knew I wanted to stretch the length, and I did get another inch out of it. I know it lays beautifully. Yes. Yeah. This is Lana Loft. Yarn, I can't remember her cloth. I wanted to bring brown sheep. Ball up. Brown sheep, right. And the off white in it, which was supposed to be a mohair, but I opted not to do the mohair. I just did this is 100% wool, some kind of sheep from a local farm, is all I know, for one of the uh, fiber fests that I went to. And then my multi, they called, of course, they called for spin cycle, and I didn't have spin cycle. This was. I'm pretty sure this was from Rhinebeck probably about eight years ago uh, from Feederbrook. Probably. And it was, I, I remember it was hanging on the, at the end of their stand and it was on sale. It was really a good price. So I got two hanks of it and that's what I used. I have 70 grams left. Well, I'm wearing my Zwag today, yes. which is Caitlin Hunter's pattern. And I made it years ago using Isiger... Highland wool. I saw quite a few of these this year, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's still popular. It's still a popular uh -huh. pattern, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty. I'd like to make another one. I wore it today because it's warmer today. So this is this is really light. Mm -hmm. I have my last Afghan square. Okay, I figured you were probably on that. the very last one. Is this the only one you put beads in? Yes. Look what I got. So my substitute number 17. 17 that was in the pattern for Nord's Vintage Afghan looked very similar to a pattern earlier, like three or four, one of those. So I wanted to do something different. So I didn't do the one in the pattern and I used this, is called Erin Afghan by Lion Brand. Oh, so it's a free right. pattern right. and theirs is one block and you do 20 blocks of the same pattern and then you put them together. And their pattern calls for bobbles here where I put the beads. Oh, okay. But I didn't want to do the bobbles, so I substituted the beads. I really like this pattern. I think it's really pretty. Mm -hmm. So that's my last square, and now mm. it's time to put it all together. Mm. I can't wait to see it now. I do have one more finished object. Mm that is still wet oh, it oh, is wow. still damp <laughs> oh i can't believe you finished you this talked already. about taking your sweater taking yes. three days to dry yeah well this has only been a day and a half and it's still pretty wet oh that's not bad but um so this is ooh, a cardigan for my sister mm -hmm. so it has pockets and it this has is heavy. It is. It looks like ribbing, but it's strips of brioche mm -hmm. stitch, mm -hmm. and all of like the detail at the cuff and on the bottom is all brioche. And then on the back, there's one. It's plain with one down the middle of the back. The pattern's called "Get the Groove" by Hinter and Stein. She'll love it. And uh, so my. My yarn is this locally raised worsted from Jackson's Folly, which I bought at New Jersey Sheep and Wool back in September. 
And I talked about how the skeins were really varied with the light and the dark gray. And originally I was going to alternate every two rows, mm -hmm. the skein, but after I got all the skeins together, I thought it would, might look better as a fade. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> the, the way the sweater's constructed doesn't lend itself to a fade. So I did the beginning of it with the light gray, and then you do the sleeves. The sleeves look darker. Which they are. Mm -hmm. And then I had remnants from the sleeves that I put in the body here. So I was mixing the sleeve yarn with the light mm -hmm. gray from the top here. And then I ran out of the light gray and the sleeve gray, and then I went to the, the darker gray at the bottom. Mm -hmm. I think that worked. So The back looks good. Yeah, yeah. because you could see yeah. what you did. The light, the medium, and the dark. Mm -hmm. Oh, she'll love it. Beautiful. So that's done. Wow, you did that so quickly. What size needle did you use? Looks like a bigger... This is worsted weight. Worsted... Is this worsted? Well, it's worsted it's like weight Aaron, yarn. It? It's done at four stitches to the inch. Well, it's called locally raised worsted. Okay. <laughs> you can I have no heavier. idea that the skeins were approximately 100 grams, but there was no yardage on them. There's no yardage. So I have no idea. I tried to measure the yardage myself, but it was... I don't know how to measure yardage properly mm. because my what I guessed for the yardage was way off. This almost looks striped right here. It's pretty. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty. Well, I mean, you could see because I was using, I was doing every other row. Yeah. You were all so right. two rows of dark, Lending two rows of light. Yeah. So nice. some of that is the variation in the yeah, yarn but itself. There's, but it's still at other places too. It looks good. Yeah. Now, no buttons, right? Button no holes? buttons. Okay. No, no buttons, no buttonholes. It's mm -hmm. just the open face cardigan. Mm -hmm. And that's hinge from Stein, you said? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like her patterns. As usual, I never stop doing those. Just my basic vanilla socks, the two by two rib on top, stockinette foot. This is an unknown, another unknown hand dye from some fiber festival I went to, but I just love the colors because of course it has that little hint of turquoise yeah. in it. Very nice. Mm -hmm. to you today. That's the latest. I didn't even wash and block these yet. And then before that I made the cicada in I guess it's like, it looks like a charcoal gray, but I guess it was like black. Whatever. And the cicada is the Plymouth yarn, shades of cicada. 414 yards. It's cotton, wool, and nylon. I have two more balls. I think I bought five of them the time we went up to Knitter's Edge and bought the cicada. Did so you, you have this dark charcoal and you have that light gray. Right. What's and your I, I made color? the navy one and I gave them away as a gift. I have a powder blue. Oh, brown. I think I did buy a brown. So these I made shorter because I thought they're cotton. Mm -hmm. Usually I make my, I used to make my cuffs leg six inches. And now I went down to five inches for these. And these, I think I made four inches. And they're a, knit, a two by two rib and just the basic stock in it. And I just do my, it's top down, Joyce pattern, custom fit, Joyce custom fit socks. Are those too? No, they're for me. They're really, oh, that's right. You said you wanted to make them higher. That's right. This time a higher leg. So I finished one mm -hmm. and I'm at the heel on the second one so that's what I'm looking on now does this soften up when you wash it so I don't remember because the you made another pair right yeah and they were gyms so he always wore them I mm -hmm. I don't really know if they soften up or not it would be nice but they know. definitely feel more they're a little more rustic yeah, yeah. I have sock in progress. I just started. I thought I'd do more in the card back and forth to rhyme back, but I didn't. This is another one of my stash yarns. One of my favorite. I'm going to show you this first. And this is opal. German yarn. 
this is probably hmm, maybe 10 years in this stash, but if you get 425 meters, it's 75% wool and 25% polyamide. And this color is rendezvous. rendezvous. It's really, I think it's so pretty. Yeah. It has off white and pink and a, like a denim blue. And I thought this was black, but it looks, doesn't it look green? It looks like a dark green. Does it look dark green? I wanted it to be black. I need socks with black. It looks and black. It has a little bit me. of tan. Does it look black? Good. And I'm keeping it in my Phillies stitch and pitch bag. Today's day seven as we're recording of the playoffs with the Phillies. They lost last night. It's three and three. Dun, dun, dun. With the Arizona Diamondbacks. Let's see what happens. By the time you're today? all watching it, you'll know tonight is the tonight. seventh game in the playoffs. Diamondbacks. So we'll see if they go to the World Series this year. It's all decided tonight. Last night's game was awful. I couldn't even watch it. <laughs> Oh, the, one more thing I do have. I could show it just to, as a reminder, I guess. It's been a while. We spoke of Don, seeing Don Barker. And I met her last year at Rhinebeck, and she taught me this this stitch with the uh, pooling. And there's a little picture of it. The float shawl by Don Barker. Let's see if you can see that. I did make some progress. It's getting longer. Oh, and I saw somebody wearing one of these. We went out for dinner Sunday night. Oh, it was navy, and she had red flowers. Very pretty, mm. very very pretty. So I'm gonna persevere with it. I do like it. So in between, this was this I'm, is the background. I'm gonna set this aside though. Of the course, background knitting <laughs> for my tessellated, and then I'm always doing socks so on that. And the last time I think I was on the podcast, I was working on oh, was it Marie Green's knit along? Yeah. I ripped that out just to tell you. <laughs> I ripped it out. I didn't like the yarn that I was using for it. Well, you just had a birthday. I did. Sunday was my 70th birthday. Oh my gracious. So I have a little oh. a little thing for you. Lyric. Lyric Hill Farm. Oh. Oh, isn't oh my gosh. Oh, we well, of course we saw these. They're beautiful. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you, Joy. It's a felted soap, but this is special. This isn't just, shall we open it up? Sure. Oh, it's lavender. Oh, good, I like lavender. I actually have a lavender soap in with my bed sheets, and they smell nice. Oh, is it? Oh, look how, did you look at it? Look how nice they made that. Look how pretty, everybody. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, it smells Oh, I can smell good. it, yeah. I know, it's Mmm, I might put this in, I don't know, my closet or someplace. Because I won't, I probably won't use it. Mmm, the box even smells good. So here's the Lyric Hill Farm. Goat milk goods and more. Oh, goat milk. Established 2004. And there's a card in there. Okay, I'll open that in No, you can open it up. Oh, okay. Oh, the envelope. <laughs> What does it say about let dry between uses? But I probably won't. I just love the. Oh, when I saw the envelope, I knew this. <laughs> and look, the card I got. <laughs> this is the one from Nancy's daughter. Very nice. I save all these in my yarn room. I have everything displayed. Anything sheep or Sheepy. yarn related. Thank you very much. How nice. Oh, I love the fragrance. Oh, that's right. Speaking of fragrances, we both. Oh, I didn't bring mine with me, but that. yeah. But leading into that, because that's what this makes me think of. Mm. Ooh, now I can smell that. I love this. Ooh. We had this in the car all weekend, and it's, the car smells so good. This is called Moth Beware. Gotsoap.com. From Branchville, New Jersey. Yeah, it's very strong. I love it. I buy a bag of this. I just leave it in this bag and I go on every so it's aromatic red cedar. I just leave it in here. I, I do too. I, I just do this once in, in a while and it just releases the fragrance. I, I love the smell. I just love it. And I also bought the refresher oil. And she said you put a very tiny drop in. Well, I'll tell you what my next 
projects. So okay, good. Doing. Good. Then that'll lead into my next project. Good. And since I just acquired it at Rhinebeck. Oh, yes. This is very cute. I got this pattern called Ad Astra. And it's this hat. Here's another picture of it. And it's done with this colorway, but I bought this colorway to do it in with all blues and purples. Oh, that's pretty. It looks like a pyramid of blue almost. Yeah, it? yeah, it's very, very pretty. Purpley. So the moon and the stars are the off white. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So, so you, you start, start, you you start with the light color, color at the bottom and you work your way up and then use the white as the contrast. Oh, it's stranded? Okay, that's what I thought. Okay. I think these are individual skeins. I haven't are they? I haven't pulled it apart yet, but I think they're individual does it, does skeins. Does it say on there? Thirty five yards of each grading color, ninety yards of natural yarn. Yeah. From hundred percent cornmeal wool. Oh, this feels nice. Wool raised, sheared, washed, spun in Wyoming and dyed in Massachusetts. Oh, this is Sabido Farm. I get emails from there. Oh, that's very So you think this is individual? Is that how they do that? Huh. She had tons of colors. This is beautiful. Look how spongy it is. The corn is squishy. It's yeah. beautiful. I love the texture. So, this is going to be my next knitting project. My next project project will be putting the afghan together. <laughs> and this will be my next knitting project. Mm. But take a look at that chart. I know. I was just uh, checking out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it'll be bad. That's what I was wondering. So you could carry the white along. Oh, I definitely will carry it doesn't, the uh, Just right here, there's a longer... No, I'll definitely be cut. stranding the white along. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to cut it on enough every white star. white to strand it, yeah. It's a mother-daughter team of pattern designers at Sabido Farm Designs. In Carlisle, Massachusetts, domestic and locally produced yarn and finished goods. All of our yarns are raised, grown, processed, spun, and dyed in the U.S. Very nice. Mm. Yeah, that was a cute stand. That was busy. Mm -hmm. A lot of people were buying yep. these kits. Yep. You'll see a lot of these hats around. They're very cute. Well, they had a... I mean, it wasn't just this one. Yeah. They had a whole array this of... popular. I see in the yeah. eyes of everybody here. I like your colors. Very pretty. Mm, that'll be fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm looking next, forward next, to it. next? Yeah. After the Afghan. Or, or during. Concurrent, during. Yeah. <laughs> For a break. <laughs> the Afghan. I have to do some knitting and not, not oh, all I know. just sewing. I know. So my next project, and I'm really anxious to get this going, to wind this yarn, is the Pressed Flowers cardigan. I was just reading the pattern today. Now there is also the pullover. Maybe you could see the flowers better on this one. But I've, I'm going to do the cardigan. It won't be as hot for me. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> this is another mosaic. So it will be heavy. Yeah. Saturday, we said that we went to Feederbrook Farms first. Pattern calls were spin cycle, of course. Like most patterns anymore, it seems. But I went to Feederbrook. Um, we did find spin cycle at the Harrisville. Harrisville, Harrisville stand, but you had to order it. I found this at Feederbrook, and I just love it. The colorway is R Flux, just R and then F L U X. This is 100% blue face. Meister wool, four weight, 260 yards, 100 grams, made in the USA. I think colors. it looks of course, more, these are my colors. It looks more blue on camera. It looks more, yeah, it's not, more green in real life. It's that beautiful shade of aqua or turquoise or whatever. Um, and it has off-white, there's pink, uh, a little bit of gold. And if I open it up, mm, very pretty. You can see some of the colors. Even it smells, it was next to that. Oh, <laughs> mock beware. I could smell it. So I bought that for my flowers. And I had some stash yarn that I was going to go through. I knew I had some like a dark rose color that I thought might look nice with this, or gray, medium gray, the Lanoloft again. On Sunday, Jim can, Jim actually talked me into this. 
bought it for my birthday. Oh. Um, yeah, he bought me every, he bought me everything on Sunday for my birthday. That was nice. We were walking by Batten Kill Fibers from Greenwich, New York. They were right on the end of the aisle from Nancy to the bags. Oh. And as we were walking by, he Jim even said, he said, look at that color. Because <laughs> he knows me. I got this color in sport weight yarn that I'd like to use for this cardigan. I think. So what would you call this? Feel this. It's, it's sort like of a, a grayish gray, green gray or something. Green, yeah. But I think it looks, and I didn't have, he was going to go to the car and get it because this, Cedar Brook was in the car, and I said, oh, I wish I had my skein with me to check. But I I think I like mm -hmm. that together, yeah. don't you? 100% Corydale. Yeah. 325 nice? yards and 100 grams. Don't you think that feels nice? It's not like the linen loft. It's not woolly, mm -hmm. but it's has a nice texture. Mm -hmm. It's springy. Oh, yeah. Uh, email says. Let's see. So it's yeah, 325 yards, 100 grams, and Coriadale source from New York State. Three ply sport weight yarn, great for sweaters, shawls, mitts, and more. And the price, oh Cambridge Sport, it's called. Carding and spinning mill in Greenwich, New York. Battenkillfibers.com. Um, they have beautiful yarn. This was twenty dollars. Nice. I thought that was a great price. They had at least 10 colors of this swatch. That's right. Swatch. We'll be swatching. And I bought enough of this. I, Jim can get, kept saying, buy more, buy more. Because I said, now, if this doesn't work, I want to have enough to make another a complete oh. sweater. Mm -hmm. So I bought enough. I bought extra yarn to make a whole sweater. It will work. <laughs> it will work. We'll make it work. It will work. <laughs> Somehow or other. You knit from the bottom up to the armholes again. Your colors are coming up. And then you knit the front, the left front, the right front. Mm -hmm. Well, you can see these are different. And then the back, yes. In the picture, they're different. I know. And then the sleeves, of course, are going to be different. So that's that same issue that I would have had with the tessellated. Mm -hmm. The ideal situation I was thinking is if I could start a new skein for one sleeve, a new skein for the other, but I doubt it because I'm sure I'm going to need it for the body. What does everybody do with this? I guess they just let it go the way it, yes, because you're right. It has the yellow on one side and the purple on the other. Mm -hmm. The sleeves don't match either because here's blue and there's no blue there. So I guess that's the way it is. I saw so many of these sweaters. There were, I think this was like the sweater of the year with the tessellated. On Sunday, every, I swear everybody had these on because nobody was wearing the tessellated on Sunday. So there were other sweaters, <laughs> tons. I saw dozens and dozens of these sweaters, the pullovers and the cardigans. But it's not me. I'll be a year late with my sweater, but that's okay. <laughs> well, I fell in love with this yarn at Utopia. But oh, yes, yes, yes. I couldn't afford to buy enough for a whole sweater. This is, so this is Utopia. And this is a BFL, 100% BFL, 265 yards, 4 ounces. And I just love this green fading colorway they didn't have enough in skeins in this color anyway for me to for me to get enough for a sweater i think if you ask i bet i bet they have that i bet they do so instead what i did was i bought one of this and then one of a dark green to go with it to do something with but this just hit my sweet spot it's bfl which i love and it's green which i also love <laughs> And I just really like the variegation in this game from the light to the dark green. I, I like this green as well, and I think it will complement it very well on whatever I figure out to do with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why don't you make one of those leaf cowls? Oh, maybe I could. Let me, let me pull that up. I really like that. That's one of my next projects. Anyway, this one is Ridge. I'll find it. This green is Ridge Sport. This is 304 yards, so it's a little bit different yardage. This is four ounces, and this is three and a half ounces. Uh, well, whatever. And what weight is that? Sport? No. This is Sport. This one is probably DK Sport. It's called Leaf Peeping by Elizabeth Hall. And 
And that requires, again, they use, what else? Spin cycle. Spin cycle. Yeah. But I think a gradient might look good with this too. Mm -hmm. Or a variegated. Or even or a solid. Yeah, and it's sport weight. Spin cycle wilder is the solid. And, of course, dyed in the wool is the, what else they call it? On Friday, we got to Brian Beck on Friday. We were staying in Saugerties, and there's a cute little town in Saugerties. And I had heard about a yarn shop there, and we found it. And it was called, it's called A Perfect Blend. And it was mobbed. It was mobbed. It's right off the main street in Saugerties. And it's called A Perfect Blend. Here's their logo. Because they sell teas, too. Oh. They have kits. This is spicy black tea. When you make a purchase, they give you a tea bag. But they have loose teas, too, and they do serve tea there. And they do match some of their yarn, hand dye yarns, to the teas. And sell it together. But anyway, that's why it's called a perfect blend. But I finally bought something that I've wanted to for a while. I know you bought one. Unique Sock by Earth Yarns. She had little, only a couple little boxes of these. This is hand-dyed, self-striping, matching sock kit. So what you get are two little, this is right up my alley, two little yarn balls that are perfectly matched. <laughs> you don't have to wind up yarn to try to make matching pair of socks. It's already done for you. This feels really nice. This you can is... use these to make matching sleeves. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. And fingering, if I was doing something in fingering, but you're absolutely right. Yes. Here's how it knits up. And it's a very high sock. And I think I'm going to make a high sock. I don't have any for the winter. Extra fine superwash merino, 75% and 25% nylon. 220 yards in each ball. Made in Turkey. Hmm. Anyway, that was, and then I also bought, because I'm running low, I had a half gallon of eucalyn for years <laughs> that I bought in the yarn shop. When I was doing my sweater, I realized I have hardly any left. I was standing waiting to check out in a long line at the yarn shop, and they had all fragrances of eucalyn. So I bought lavender. I never had lavender. I always had eucalyptus. And the other thing I actually needed when I was doing my sleeves for my sweater, I realized I didn't have any knitters. I love Knitter's Pride double pointed needles in a size three to do my sleeves. That's a pretty color. Isn't that too. a pretty color? Mm. Every size is a different color. <laughs> Another purchase I made recently, I saw the grocery girls advertise this. It's called the Knitovation Stitch Dictionary. I buy very few books anymore. But when I saw this one, this one really interested. And, and it's by Andrea Rangel uh, on the Pine Pine Cottage. Mm -hmm. She also talked about this book. It's Andrea also wrote Alter Knits, mm -hmm. you have which that I book. have that book. Right. Yeah. So this, the whole thing is modern color work, 150 plus modern color work knitting motifs. I just think the beautiful. There are some patterns in here too, but you could adapt this to whatever you're making. These designs, I just I think they're so. Pretty. Mm -hmm. They're very different. This is something very different. And of course, they have charts. And they do have a pattern for the knits. You could incorporate this into the yoke of a sweater. Do you think that's a good idea? Oh, yeah. Right? There's just so much. All types of animals, cherry, sunflowers. It's, it's a beautiful book. And the aspen. Look how I like these. Mm. And it's charted. Here, yeah, here's a nice page with all the patterns. Or you can make an afghan mm -hmm. with all different squares. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I don't like to do except the other side. Wouldn't be nice on the wrong side. That's the only mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Yeah, it wouldn't be reversible. Well, you could do a double knit. No, thanks. <laughs> I love the Needles at the Ready podcast with Frey and Kevin. I've been watching them for years. And Kevin recently quit his full-time job and is dyeing yarn full-time now. And so it's hand-dyed in Stratford, Connecticut. 
he's I've been seeing this colorway he keeps selling out of it and he says he keeps adding it back to his shop and every time I see it I think look how squishy this is isn't that nice mm -hmm. so this is ghost water and of course my favorite color real pale aqua it's 100% superwash four ply superwash merino 438 yards so I'm really like that so I got three of these and then this is called snowy river Achilles sauce this is 75 merino 25 nylon 462 yards I love this this is like navy and off-white so was this at tan. Rhinebeck or did you order this no, online? No, I ordered this online on okay. his website. After one of his, after I watched his last episode, he said that he had just stocked his website with these colors. And I went on and looked while I was watching and I thought, oh, finally I'm going to order from him again because I really like their yarn. And this one is called Bejewel. And this is the Achilles sock base with 75 merino and 25 nylon. It's all in blues and greens, beautiful blues and greens. Let's see, can I have this? Would make nice, mm. oh, but I need sport for that cowl with the leaves. Well, unless you this do this, nice. unless you do this and then solid, I to, in then I have to add stitches. Yeah, but I thought these two blended together well too. If I wanted to do something, mm -hmm. but anyway, these are so pretty. I love their logo, I think their logo is beautiful. They're great knitters. I'm sorry I didn't bump into them this year at Rhinebeck. It's the first year I didn't bump into them. We did that first year mm -hmm. we went too, as soon as we got off the bus. And they always make beautiful sweaters for Rhinebeck. They have every day they wear a different sweater, a new sweater. Great knitters. Fun. October's my favorite month. Yeah. I love it. I love this time of the year. I just love it. Me too. So let us know down in the comments if you went to Rhinebeck and how was your time there if you did, did you or buy something special or yeah talk to somebody interesting mm -hmm. designer or even if you went to some fiber fest where you live did anybody go to woolen folk this year i didn't go on friday um they changed venues and i was hearing some mixed reviews i was just curious keep knitting everybody enjoy this time of the year before it gets too cold and you, but then you have to sit in the house and knit when it's cold that's right that's right so it's not too bad but now you can sit out in the patio and knit. Mm -hmm. When it's in the 60s, even the low 70s. Well, it's going to the low 70s this week. Yeah. I think Not it's probably the last show. I think it's the last show. <laughs> I hope everybody's doing well. And it's good to be on again. Yep. And knitting Great again. Great to have you back, Janet. Thank you. Happy Halloween, everybody. Yeah, happy Halloween. We'll see you next month. Bye. Bye. Take care.
one too. That's good. Seventy, 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 seventy